you are being called the Donald Trump of France. How do you feel about that? Do you think you are the Donald Trump of France? The reality is that I was the only politician that definitively supported the defeat of Hillary Clinton. And to consider that Donald Trump's policies, subjects that concerned my country, were positive. The refusal of wild globalization, the refusal of massive immigration, the refusal of the intrusion into other countries that in reality contributed to the rise of fundamentalist Islamists and that let them become more powerful. Also, the refusal of these free trade treaties, like the one that Hillary Clinton was ready to sign, between the U.S. and the European Union, that would be completely devastating for the French economy. It's true that the election of Donald Trump is a massive return to the people. It's a return of the nation in a world in which we considered that the nation was a thing to move past. Unquestionably, we had some points in common with Donald Trump, because we hope for independence for our country a return of power, and a calming of relations around the world. When Donald Trump won, the French establishment woke up, seemed frightened, and said, wow, Marine Le Pen can win in France. Do you think Donald Trump's win portends good things for you? I think that the elites have lived too long among themselves. We are in a world where globalization, which is an ideology, has forgotten and put aside the people, the people's interests, aspirations and dreams. They have acted like carnivores who use the world to enrich only themselves. And whether it's the election of Donald Trump or Brexit, the elites have realized that the people have stopped listening to them, that the people want to determine their futures and in a perfectly democratic framework, regain control of their destiny. And that panics them because they are losing the power that they had given themselves. So yes, in these conditions, if the French people too wish to regain their independence, wish to regain control of their country, and wish to reinforce the elements of security, the borders, the rule of law, economic patriotism, then I will be elected president. The shorthand to describe your party in the United States is frequently anti-Semitic, anti-Muslim, what do you say to people who use that description for the National Front? The description that has been used for the National Front in the United States is exactly the description that was used for the supporters of Donald Trump in France. Each is as false as the other. It's a way for the system to discredit those who refuse to play by the rules of the system. We cannot let ourselves be infantilized. We cannot let ourselves be stereotyped. And I think that many Americans today realize that the deplorable image that has been made of the National Front in the United States was as insulting and as misleading as the deplorable image that was made of Donald Trump and his supporters in France. Investors in the financial markets are nervous about you because you want to return France to the franc. Why? For a very simple reason. In reality, we are in control of our own country so long as we have our own currency. Money is one of the elements of sovereignty. If you don't have your own currency, you allow others to impose on your economic policies, your immigration policies, your social policies. The political austerity that is imposed today by the European Union is founded on the euro. We are a free people. We fought for this. You too fought to be a free people. It was not so that today we could give it all away to technocrats that we have not elected who decided for us which policies we should adopt. And I don't want to accept the euro, which is no longer a currency in the spirit of the European Union, but is in reality a weapon, that it sticks in our sides to force us to go where they please. The euro is a failure. It's an economic failure. It's a social failure. It's one of the reasons for which France has seen such a high rate of unemployment, for which France has become so much poorer, for which our industry has failed, for which we are confronted with an unfair international rivalry. There is no reason for us not to return to our own national currency. So if you become the leader of France, would, would there be a referendum? How would it work, a return to the franc? I very clearly said that I would organize a referendum six months after my election, not only on whether to leave the euro, but on whether to leave the European Union. I would use these six months to negotiate with the European Union. 
Could you give us back our territorial sovereignty, our monetary, budgetary, economic sovereignty? You will? Very well. We can stay in this new European Union. You will not? So then I will ask the French people to leave the European Union. You know, I do not feel isolated at all. What has happened in Great Britain, what has happened in the United States, the upcoming Austrian presidential election, I am sure of the loss of the referendum of Mr. Renzi soon. All these elements show that in reality, the people support what I've been proposing for many years. We want to regain our liberty and bring about the policies that we want. Of course, the big financial powers aren't very happy, since in reality, they have gorged themselves and made their riches on all these norms and regulations and currency that they've imposed on us. But as I've said, it's the return of the people. I'm fighting for the people, not for the financial markets. Something that would be confusing in the United States is you're described as far right. In the U.S., the right embraces the free market, smaller government, um, a higher retirement age, lower pay for civil servants. That's not the way I see your economic plan. <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. I ask myself the same question. Why do they categorize us as the extreme right? Simply because, even if it has no resemblance to our political beliefs, it's a way to discredit us. So long as you demand change, so long as you're against immigration, so long as you're against the financial markets, they stick you with the label of the extreme right. The reality is you can't compare what I propose with what someone like Donald Trump is proposing for a simple reason, which is that the United States and France are two different countries. I'm advocating for a strategic state, and on this we may have some points in common. I am attached to French public service. I am attached to a form of social security for the most vulnerable. I am obviously for a free economy. I am a big defender of entrepreneurs. But it's true that France is a specific country. And because I defend the identity of France, I defend the right of every country to maintain their own identity, economic identity included. But answer me a basic question. When it comes to dividing a nation's resources, What's the better way, the markets or the government? Both of them. Because the reality of France is its association between the strategic state, which represents a defense of the interests of the entire population and the superior interests of the country, and the great entrepreneurs that created the power behind our country. In France, it's notably by the development of the public command and public research that all of our industrial giants were able to take part in a conquest of the world. It's our specificity and our history. So, yes, we have to help business and defend the markets, but the state has to be there to prevent drifts, to prevent excess, to enforce the rules of the game, which allows for a healthy and respectful competition. This is not the case anymore today. Today, the retreat of the state to the advantage of financial powers, this carte blanche that has been given to financial powers and multinationals, is killing our economies. And obviously, I don't support this. So I think that France is this fragile balance between the strategic state and businesses. And up until now, it was working. Probably my last question on the economy, but when I read the manifesto from 2012, you actually call for what sound like the equivalent of price controls on bread, on flour. Um, that sounds very interventionist, socialist. I think that it's a question of economic state. The economic state of France is as if we had suffered a war. It's an economy of a country that has just fought a war. So I think that so long as we have suffered a war with great economic losses, entire sectors have disappeared. The toy industry, the clothing industry, the jewelry industry, all of it has collapsed. So the state has to boost it. And when the economy has stabilized, then the state completely naturally can retreat again once it has reinstated the rules of the game. Today, we need the state to help us back on our feet. It is not on my part an ideology in which the state must intervene everywhere, under all circumstances. But I think that today it is necessary that the state take into its hands the regulations that must be applied and that it stop being so generous to people who don't have jobs, who are taken care of by the state. 
because that is also a problem in France. We are extremely generous, too generous, especially to people who have come to our country, though they have nothing to do here. Angela Merkel announced last night that she is going to run for office again. And she is being described as a stabilizing force in Europe right now. Do you think she's a stabilizing force? Non, Madame Merkel, c'est la force de l'inertie. C'est celle qui veut justement que rien ne change. Angela Merkel is a force of inertia. She's the one who wants nothing to change and for European countries to continue to submit to the same remedies that are actually killing them. Today, Mrs. Merkel is very isolated. Those who defend her vision are very isolated with her. They have not understood that the world is changing. The balance of the world is starting to move with Russia, the United States, Great Britain, the V4 group, the countries in the south of Europe that are suffering so much from the policies that are imposed by Mrs. Merkel, Spain, Italy, Portugal. I think that the days of the ideology supported by Mrs. Merkel are numbered. Something incredibly important is happening in the world. I think that the 20th century ended with the fall of the Berlin Wall, and the 21st century has just been born with this series of electoral events that is turning its back on the wild globalization that has been imposed on us for decades now. Why do you want to become closer to Russia? Firstly, because France, historically, has had good relations with Russia. Secondly, it's a country of Europe. It is completely natural to maintain commercial and strategic relations with this great power which is at our doorstep. Thirdly, because I think that the Cold War, which was brought on by the Americans against Russia, is a great danger to world peace. I am for a multipolar world. I think that the United States and Russia, as well as a whole series of other countries, France included, can perfectly well maintain peaceful and balanced relations without creating conflicts, conflicts which are objectively artificial. And it's the reason for which I am very happy, and I was very happy, to see that Vladimir Putin, as well as Donald Trump, were ready to begin discussions to rationalize and pacify relations between the two nations. France is a power of balance. We can only celebrate this situation, and we can only fear the escalation of conflict between two countries in which, geographically, we lie precisely in the middle. Muslim immigration. Do you think it's bad? Does it hurt French culture? I don't have a religious vision or a racial vision in the perception I have of my own people. What is sure is that France has been a victim of an absolutely anarchic immigration, an absolutely massive immigration for decades now, which not only have imposed heavy economic problems, but also heavy problems of balance in our social regimes. And over time, problems of multiculturalism are dividing French society. It's creating communities that exist next to one another, and sometimes against one another. I don't want this for my country. My fight is not against a religion. My fight is against the political use that is made today of this religion. For the number of immigrants who have come to France, we've seen it clearly. Massive immigration leads to communitarianism. Communitarianism is in reality the basket from which Islamic fundamentalists draw their combatants of tomorrow against France. We have to, at all costs, and with a very strong firmness, fix these problems, fight against fundamentalist Islam, bring fundamentalist Islam to its knees and exclude it from our country. It is completely contrary to our lifestyle, to our civilization, to our values, and I cannot permit the laxity, the weakness of our government in fighting against it. Francois Fillon won the Republican primary last night, campaigning on radical change, and he's very pro-free markets. What do you think of that? Je pense que c'est le comment dire c'est le plan B du système. I think that it's the plan B of the system. We needed someone who defends the financial markets, someone who defends the multinationals, who defends the politics of austerity imposed by the European Union. Macron was very fragile, so they found this one. In reality, they're interchangeable. We see clearly that he is completely countercurrent to what's happening in the world. He's like the candle maker after the invention of electricity. Anything you want to say to the American people? I am very happy about the election of Donald Trump. The choice of the American people was courageous and advantageous. 
And I think that the United States will once again regain its former image in the world, which had become very damaged, especially by the administration for which Hillary Clinton worked. The United States cannot have the image of warmongers, with all the potential consequences it could have for our respective countries. So that the United States has once again regained an image as an organization of peace is beneficial for us all. The polls say you could win. Do you, does that make you nervous? No, ça me rend pas nerveuse du tout, ça me rend impatiente. No, this doesn't make me nervous at all. It makes me impatient. I see my country falling. I see in the eyes of strangers this lack of understanding when they arrive and they say, but where is France? I also want France to come back and for France to rediscover its power, its impatience that motivates me today. Quick, 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 quick. Let's put our beautiful, coveted country back on its feet. Have you spoken with Donald Trump? No, 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 j'ai jamais eu l'occasion de lui parler. Uh, no, I never had the occasion to speak to him. But I hope we will have the chance to meet, because I think we are the ones who will change the world and to put it back on its feet. In any case, I'd like to talk to him in the future and compare our positions. Last question, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of his idea to build a wall? Mais il existe déjà le mur. The wall already exists. It already exists. The reality is that the United States cannot put in place dissuasive immigration policies, since the United States already does not deliver in ways as generous as France does, with subsidies and taking charge of illegal immigrants. If it's the only way to prevent these illegal immigrants from continuing to lower the wages of American workers, because that is the reality, those that advocate for massive immigration it's not for humanitarian reasons, it's for economic considerations. And it's the American public that has suffered the consequences. So I think it's pragmatic on his part to put in place methods of stopping illegal immigration. France won't need to use this. It's enough that we cut the vacuum pumps of immigration. All these social services, all the housing, the free access to schools, etc. But the United States can't do this. Everyone takes the measures they deem necessary to put an end to something that I think harms the prosperity and security of the American people. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.